All right, everyone, we are live. Make sure you guys uh, check in, please. Zoomers, make sure your name is correct. All right, there's still a few people missing. Come on, everyone, check in. See who's missing. All right, Francis is not here yet. Katya is not here. Susanna. Susanna, Susanna, Susanna. All right, I see you there. All right, I checked you in. Guys, today we're going to go over uh, legal uh, descriptions. And basics of a contract. So legal descriptions and basics of a contract. Got everybody yep all right cool so um, legal descriptions guys you're gonna need to remember these we're gonna repeat them a bunch of times not that you don't have anything to to remember right <laughs> just a few more all right guys just making sure everything is in order. We are good to go. All right, um, cameras on, please. Those of you doing this for the first time, cameras on. <laughs> Jose says we have to remember the whole book. Pretty much, pretty much, yep. Just remember the book, nothing else, right? <laughs> the content does not ma matter, just the book itself. All right, so uh, let me see. Rob, did, did you check in? 
You did? Oh, okay, great. I just saw you were there. So. All right, Jose e on YouTube, you got to remember the jokes too. Yes. Make sure you always remember the jokes. All right, so we're good to go now. I'm sorry about that, the, these delays. Uh, one thing I want to let you guys know, uh, some people are having difficulty. I spent a little bit of time uh, with PSI exams and a student uh, that's trying to take the exam. And apparently there's something going on with the login. If you guys, I'll remind you again, but if you guys have ever any issues uh, when you're done with a, with a class um, uh, session and you pass the exam and you go for the state exam, if you have any issues taking the state exam, registering or whatever, reach out to me because I have the, the email uh, directly to these people. So I'll try to get it, um, uh, get it done. Okay. So that's what I was doing uh, today. It took a little bit longer. And that's why we started a little bit later today. But uh, a student trying to take the state exam is very important, as you guys can imagine. All right. I did not want to cut into the, the hours of the, the classroom. But the longer it takes for somebody to take the exam, the worse it is. All right. So as soon as you pass the, the school exam, straight for the state. Do not wait too long. Say it again. Thank you. Oh yeah, you're more likely to forget. How many times do you forget from like, just imagine this, we finish on a Wednesday, right? And then we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday is like two days, Sunday is like two days. So you just lost a week right there, right? If you're not studying, if you're not in it, it's gone. Um, a friend of mine told me that she couldn't register. Yeah, so to register, unfortunately, like for the, for the school itself, for New Direction School, I upload the records to PSI exam. So as soon as I upload, you are eligible. If you cannot register after I upload it for any reason, that's when you reach out to me. Okay. Uh, if you are from a different school, I can try to help out, but I cannot vouch like sending an email to PSI exams, those of you on YouTube, but I cannot um, alter any uploads that your school might have uh, done uh, for you, okay? But I can still try to help if you have any questions. All right, um, don't forget cameras on, please. So, <sighs> difficult, Mr. Hernandez, camera. I'm going to charge you $5 for every minute that you're off camera. There she is. You, you, you talk about charging $5. <laughs> it turns on the camera right away. You're going to charge me for every minute? Okay. All right. Um, so what are legal descriptions? When we buy a property, right? When we buy a property, we're buying 120 Main Street, right? It, does anybody own property? Do you own property? Raise your hand if you own property. Nobody? Okay, Susanna. No, I'm asking if you own now. So, what I'm trying to say is, if you if you own a property now, go to your deed. You do. Go to your deed, and see what it says there. Okay. One twenty Main Street. Okay. In Portugal, doesn't help me for this example, Susanna. But thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Just for for this example right now, it's not going to help. Um. So. Uh, what, what was I saying? So when you check your deed, the deed says uh, that you own 120 Main Street. But that's just as a quick reference. The deed 
which is the what registers the transfer to your to your name right the deed does not say anywhere that it's a one family that it's a two family that it's a four family in fact the deed does not express anything regarding what type of properties on the land the only thing that's described on the deed is the land itself so remember we talked about this yesterday land use control when we buy a property right we're buying the land and the rights to do whatever we want with the property you can build you can knock it down and make it just a, a lot right uh if you're in a single family house but it's zoned for two or three right you can change it to a two or three subject obviously to building codes and uh some other things right but you can do whatever you want what you bought when you bought the house what you bought was actually the land if it's a developed land it has more value so there's a house on it it's developed but what you bought was always the land now for that reason the deed only describes the land itself through uh, one of the three methods or a combination of the three methods of legal description so here you go there are many common ways of describing properties by address so 100 main street uh by name buckingham palace white house city hall you just call it the name uh or a general description like the south 40 acres these are informal descriptions and are not acceptable for the use in public recordation generally speaking in a court of law because they lack both the permanence and sufficient information for a surveyor to locate the property so even if a legal document or public record refers to an address even if like the deed refers to 120 main street the reference is always supported by an accepted legal description okay so every single document that's recorded that goes against a property must have a proper legal description now what is a legal description a legal description is one in which accurately locates and identifies the boundaries so a legal description is a description that accurately locates the property and identifies the boundaries if i say you live on 120 main street does it say what area do you own where does it start where does it end no it doesn't it's just 120 main street right so it immediately locates the property for um uh let's say gps purposes like a pinpoint this is where you are but doesn't say what it is right so it has to do so the description has to do so to a degree acceptable by courts of law if you take me to court right to say hey bruno your fence is on my property well prove to me that it's your property so your description and my description must be to a t of what the actual um lot size and and boundaries are now the general criteria for legal description is one that alone it alone provides sufficient data for uh, a surveyor to locate the property and a legal description identifies the property as unique and distinct from all other properties legal description provides accuracy and consistency over time and systems of legal description and theory facilitate transfers of ownership and prevent boundaries uh, disputes and problems with the chain of title we already talked about chain of title so it's what links the current owner to the previous owner to the one before that and so on now a legal description is required we're going to repeat this a bunch of times over the next uh, few chapters but a legal description is required for public recording for creating a valid deed of conveyance or lease for completing mortgage documents or even for executing and recording other legal documents so again anything that's against the property must have a legal description okay in addition, a legal description provides a basis for court rulings on encroachments and easements. What is an encroachment, guys? Who can tell me? What is an encroachment? Encroachment. This word. 
What is it? Illegal what? Intruding. Okay. All right. So illegally intruding onto somebody else's property. That's what it is. Here's my property line, but I decide to build my fence over here. But I'm one foot into your property. I'm encroaching about one foot onto your property. That's illegal. Okay. All right. So Andrea wrote using someone else's property. So that could be legal if it's an easement, right? Or it could be illegal if it's an encroachment. So we're going to put this illegal and then legal. Use of someone else's property. So an encroachment is an illegal use of someone else's property, where an easement is a right that I have, right? Uh, and it's a legal use of someone else's property. Easement is a right. And both of these, for somebody wrote here encumber, right? Let me see who did. Amira, correct. So, bless you. Both of these are encumbrances. These are types of encumbrances. Why? Because if there's an illegal encroachment, it limits... Uh, the value or the transfer of title until it's resolved, right? If there's a legal encroachment, legal encroachment, right? At least it's declared, but it's also limiting, uh, I'm sorry, uh, legal um, encumbrance, like an easement uh, or mortgage or whatever. Um, they also limit the transfer. I cannot transfer for whatever value I want because I have to satisfy the mortgage, right? But legal or illegal use of someone else's property. Very good. Now, there are three methods, three accepted methods of legally describing properties, and these are the meets and bounds, rectangular survey system or government survey method, and recorded plat method or lot and block. Okay. Now, the very first one, the meets and bounds, making it, re uh, making it easy for you to remember. Meets and bounds is where property lines meet and create the boundaries. Okay. So meets and bounds, meets means measurements and points of reference, but just for you to remember, because of the way it's written, meets and bounds is where property lines meet and create boundaries. So this is how we close the box. This is my property right here. Boom. Property lines meet over there. That's my property. Neighbor's property is right here. That's somebody else's property. But my property lines, they meet right here. One. Sorry. One, two, three, four, and we close that box. And this is my property because the property lines meet and create boundaries. Okay, it's the easiest way to remember. Meets and bounds, property line meets and create boundaries. All right. All right. Now, a meets and bounds description. Meets and bounds description identifies the boundaries of a parcel using reference points, distances, and angles. The description always identifies an enclosed area by starting with an origination point called point of beginning. Eric, it's complicated. We we'll get some coffee, man. Or POB. Okay. So everything must start somewhere. We call it point of beginning. So if we're going to measure something, right? This is the property. 
we need to start somewhere. I'll start over here and call it POB, point of beginning. And then I'm going to go clockwise to the next point, right? And then I'm going to go clockwise to the next point. And to the next one. And to the next one. Again, till we close the box at the point of beginning. And this becomes our property. Okay? So we start at the point of beginning. We go, go, go till we get back to um, where we started. Okay? All right. The terms meets refers to distance and direction. And the term bounds refers to fixed reference points, monuments, or landmarks. Now, a monument or landmark, monument or landmark, could be natural or artificial. Landmarks are, could be trees, rocks, rivers, and even lakes. And artificial landmarks are typically surveyor stakes. Okay, so we put it on the floor, surveyor stake says this is where the property ends. Okay. So we're going to go through an example right now on the next page. We are on page 120. Okay, page 120. And we have a map. Guys, if you have any questions, stop me at any time. Uh, this should be easy, but this part at least. But stop me at any time and ask the questions. So this is a map. Okay, and we're looking for a particular property. We need to figure out in this map which property is ours. What are we buying? Notice that doesn't say, thank you, Monifa, page 121. Uh, notice, see, Suzanne, it's contagious what you did yesterday. Uh, so notice that there's no houses on it. You don't see any houses on this property, right? So we don't know if it's a one family, if it's a four family, if it's commercial, if it's residential, we have no idea. What we're trying to figure out is which parcel of land belongs to us. Which parcel of land belongs to us, right? Now, when we have a map, there's one thing you always gotta look for, always. And this is the first thing we do. Look for the N. What does the N stand for? On the map, what is N? North. Thank you very much. So what we're going to have, it says that north is that way, right? So this is north. If it's facing, if it's down, it's south. What most people have difficulty with is the other two. What are the other two? East and west. But the way you guys just said it, that's how this would be, right? Because you said east and west. Because that's how we read out in, in, the, in, in this country, right? We read from left to right. So this will be left, this will be right. So east and west. But ew, that doesn't sound right, does it? Ew, right? It's not. It's we, okay? North, south, and we. So west comes first, east comes last, okay? We, north, south, we, okay. Never eat shredded wheat. Why, it's bad for you? Never eat sour, sour worms, uh, soggy waffles. There are so many ways to remember, whatever works, okay? whatever works but what you need to remember is that west is always 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 on the left and east is always 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 on the right okay so on the left and on the right why am i saying this because we're going to talk about the east line and the uh, west line of a uh, particular street so in this case we have, for instance, Dowell Road, there's a line over here, and there's a line over here, right? This one right here is the left line, this is the right line. Or translating, this is the west line, or the east line of 
Dowell Road. So when somebody says, my property starts on the east line of Dowell Road, then I know that my property is not on uh, this side, my property is on that side of Dowell Road. Does that make sense? You start already identifying, okay, uh, I'm looking at it, there's numbers behind it, there's numbers in front of me, okay, this is north, right, great. Left, right, I know where I'm at. My property is on this side. Does that make sense? Right, so you need to know um, west, you need to know east. North and south, everybody knows, up or down, okay? That's the easiest one, okay? The east and the west is the problem. Jose E says, blueprint reading, typically it's north up, south down, west left, and uh, right east. Yep, so what I was trying to do here, there you go. So once you get the, the map, you find the N and you rotate it to be facing up, that's north. Position yourself pointing north, and now you know exactly where you are. All right, so if you need, so back in the day, we did, I don't know if you guys remember, we did not have ways or maps on Google, right? Or GPSs. We didn't have the Magellan or the TomTom, Tom, right? What did we have? Actual paper maps. And it was really cool when we were kids, at least I remember um, when I was in the, you know, scavenger hunts and stuff like that, right? It was really cool because you get the map and try to figure out what's the next step and how do we win this competition? Where do I go next, right? And trying to read the map was the best thing ever back then now I don't have time to read a map hey uh, Google I'm not talking to you right now okay um, get me directions for whatever and I put the, the the address and then what does Google say or Siri or Cortana or whatever it is that you guys use they say we found the directions for this place it takes you X amount of minutes for you to get there would you like me to start the, the um, uh, the travel plan or something like that, right? And boom, start. Nowadays it's so easy. I bet you that 90% of the people nowadays, even those that remember, that used maps before, nowadays they lost, completely lost, right? But realtors, for you it's important. For you it's important. I know the, the, the deed, as I said before, says it's 120 Main Street, but what if you're buying a piece of land what if the, the, the house does not have a number? What if it's a double lot? What if it's a corner lot? What if it's, you see what I'm saying? So you need to be able to identify the parcel that the client is buying, right? Because you're the one showing it, right? Thank God for developments, big numbers right in front of it. <laughs> but if it's undeveloped somehow, then you need to know. All right, so back to this. We already got this, north, south, and then we. Left, right, right, we. West, east. So this is a, a, a potential description. And this is a potential description in the uh, state exam. All right, it would say, for instance, a parcel of land located in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, having the following description, commencing or beginning at the intersection of the south line of Route 199 and the middle of Flint Creek. So we're gonna stop right here. This is what we just read. Beginning at the intersection of south line of Route 199. So now we know that it's north or south. So it's a line below, right? And the middle of Flint Creek. So now we gotta figure out the middle of Flint Creek. Now guys, before I read anything else, why would we have a property um, starting at the middle of, or, or ending at the middle, or having any part of the middle of Flint Creek. Why would we have property getting to the middle of Flint Creek? Anybody? Close, Philip. You wrote littoral rights, close. Doesn't the creek have a stream? Or is it standing water? I'm waiting. Anybody? If it's not Lotoro, then it's what? 
Riparian, very good. Riparian rights. So you have riparian rights because it has a stream. All right, so let's look at the map. I told you south line of Route 199. Let's identify Route 199, boom. This right here is Route 199. Okay, Eric, make sure you guys look at the screen for now. This right here is Route 199. That green is Route 199. And it says it's the south line of Route 199. So as you guys can tell, there's two lines. There's the north and there's the south line. So if the property starts at the south line, that means that the property is somewhere along this bottom line, correct? Somewhere around there. So we got that. All right, let me clear this for now. And then it says the middle of Flint Creek. So we know it's this line at the bottom, then the middle of Flint Creek. So now we need to see where is Flint Creek right here. Great. So this is Flint Creek. And the property begins on the south line of Route 189 and the middle of Flint Creek. I'm going to go as slow as I can, and I'm sure Jose E. on the YouTube is like, all right, this is easy. I do this all the time. All right, so just bear with me, okay? So this is what we got. This is where the property line meets. This is the south line. And this is the middle of the creek, right? Where does it meet? Boom, right there. So if you are looking at a property and, and it asks you uh, to identify the property, you know where to start already, right? We identified it right there. Now, the next thing it says, if you guys read, the next thing it says is thence Thence southwesterly along, so southwesterly along the center thread of Flint Creek, and we go 410 feet more or less to the Willow Tree. Okay, Willow Tree landmark, and that's where it stops. Now, I want to point out one thing right away this word, thence. Okay, the only thing it means when you read it is then. <laughs> That's what it is. So it's an old English word. Okay, I stand up for this. It's an old English word, um, thence, and simply means hey, you began here, and then what you do is you go here, right? So when you see thence, simply means then the next thing you do is go this route so thence we're going to go southwesterly we're going to move southwesterly along the flint creek right we're going to go 410 feet more or less until we find a landmark and that landmark is called a willow tree so let's go over here flint creek this is where we started right now we're going to go over the center thread of Flint Creek all the way down and we keep keep on going 410 feet more or less until we get to where? The willow tree. So <clears throat> in remote areas, obviously if you're in the city, we don't find this as much, right? Uh, it's easy to locate, oh, there's a property, right? But in remote areas, right, we're walking and as we're walking the property, the boundaries of the property, we see a tree. All right. This is where the property line ends right here. We stop and then we shift the direction and we look at the what the uh, description says next. So this is the next point right here. Because we found the willow tree. Okay. Now, what does it say next? cross everything out once we got to the willow tree it says then we're gonna go north right we're gonna go up but we're gonna go at <clears throat> we're gonna go at an angle we're gonna go at 65 degree 
west. So we're going to go northwest at 65 degree angle, right? And we're going to go 500 feet more or less to, uh, sorry, to the east line of Dowell Road. And that's where it stops, right? So what we just did right here was, and no, you guys don't need to figure this one out. But we calculated a 65 degree angle. If I was the surveyor, right, I would know how to read this a lot easier. For us, do we need this 100, all of it 100%? No. But I think you guys have an idea what's a 45 angle, what's a 90 angle, right? What is 65, right? You have an idea. So we can pretty much look at it and say that this is the next part of the property. We're gonna go, notice that it's going up, right? So north, it's gonna go up, and it's going in this direction, which is, so this is north, and this is west. So here's the property line, keep on going, boom. And we're gonna go 500 feet until we reach Dowell Road. That's the next point. This is where we stop. Okay, you guys with me so far? Fairly easy, right? So far? Okay. Back to the description, it says. Then, right? We're going to go north two degrees east so we're going to go northeast now two degrees on a map we're not going to see much but there is an angle there okay and we're going to go 200 feet more or less right along the east line of dowell roads until we reach the next stop and the next spot stop is the south line of route 199 okay so if we go back here <clears throat> We cannot see it clearly here, but according to the description, there's a little two degree angle, right? East, and we're going north, right? So there's a little degree angle here. And let's say that this is the, the 2%, right? Uh, two degrees, I'm sorry, not 2%, two degree angle. And we stop at the next point, which is the south line of route 199 so again north line south line that's where we stop right good so far and the description then says to finalize the description says thence we're going to go north 90 degrees east 325 more or less feet more or less along the south line of route 189 and we go back to the point of beginning so we get back to where we started All right this is easy we started here right we are here right now and it says we're going to go a 90 degree angle right and it says for us to go east so which direction are we going to go that way perfect so here we go until we reach the point of beginning all right so guys all this to say that this right here is our property Congratulations, everyone. You guys just figure out how to define your property. This is mine, right? On this side is the neighbor, right? Here is another neighbor, right? Here's the road that separates to someone else, and here's the road that separates to someone else as well. Simple as that. Can you guys now grab a deed and identify the property? Easy. We just start at one point. It's, it tells you there where you start. I just read the description. You just got to follow it.
The key here is to know north, south, east, and west. Okay, north, south, and we. That's all it is. Okay. Any questions? Eric? You're good? Okay. Any questions, guys, before we move forward? Pretty easy, right? Amira, are you waving your hand like you want to ask a question or you were just arguing with Manifa? Like, Leave me alone! <laughs> that's what I felt like. I don't know if that's, that's what it was. <laughs> it could have been like, hey, Bruno, or it could have been like, hey, leave me alone. One of them. All right. So that was it. That's for meets and bounds. All right, next one we have is called the Rectangular Survey System. Oh, you're celebrating understanding North, South, and We? That's what you're doing? All right, cool. Hey. All right. Um, next thing we have is the Rectangular Survey System, also known as the Government Survey Method. Now, the Rectangular Survey System, as the name says, is based on rectangles. Okay? So we're trying to define things, instead of having those odd-shaped properties and difficult to understand, we're going to divide everything into perfect or at least attempt to have perfect squares or rectangles, okay? Now, to institute the system, all affected land was surveyed into latitude, which is east and west, and longitude, which is north and south lines, okay? The object or the goal was to create uniform grids, uniform grids of squares called townships, which would have equal size and be given a municipal reference for identification. All right, so here's an example. All right? So this is a particular area. There's a bunch of townships here, a bunch of townships, okay? These squares, each one of them is a township, each one of these, okay? Now, you're going to see that we have meridians, we have parallels, we have baselines, ranges, and we have tiers. Right? Sorry. I'm sure you guys can hear that one. Fire. They already know this part is going to be a tough one, so they're already sending the fire department. Let's cool everybody down. <laughs> Overthinking. All right, so it's a bunch of squares. All right. Um, now, meridians are the, the north-south longitudinal lines. North-south longitudinal lines. So these are meridians. Okay? Then we have, I'll explain that better uh, later. Then we have parallels. Parallels are the east-west latitude lines. So... These are parallels, okay? A township is always in between uh, two parallels and two um, meridians. A township is between two parallels and two meridians, okay? We have a range and each range, as well as each tier, is six miles wide. Each range and each tier is six miles wide, okay? So if we go back here, this is a tier when it's up down, and this is a range side to side, okay? So each township is pretty much a six by six square. Each township is a six by six square. So each township has 
36 square miles. Six times six is 36. Now, let's say you are in New York or you are in New Jersey or in Connecticut. The original 13 states, right? They don't use this system. The original 13 states, they don't use this system. That's why you can have a township that's um, one square mile. You can have a township that's 10 square miles. Like there's no uniformity of what a township is. Uh, as uh, as we started moving towards other states and, and developing other states, we figured out, hey, let's let's try to make it simpler to identify. And that's the way they, they implemented this grid. We put a rectangle, cut it into several uh, squares, and boom, that's a township. All right? Now, in this system, a township is divided into 36 squares. And these squares are called sections. 36 squares called sections. Okay? If each square, I'm sorry, if each township is 36 square miles, right? If we divide by 36 squares, that means that each section is one square mile, right? If I have th six by six is 36, right? That's the township. If I divide into 36 numbers, right? That means that each one of them is one square mile. And one square mile is 640 acres. One square mile is 640 acres. All right, so here's an example. This is a township, the whole thing. The whole block is a township, okay? Six by six. And right here, when we zoom in, this is section one of the township. And the section is one by one. So each township is one mile left and one mile right, and one mile top, one mile bottom, right? So that means that the area, area, is one square mile or 640 acres one square mile or 640 acres you guys with me so far okay it's a small chapter i'm going as slow as i can all right Hey, uh, Sonia, licensed people are not allowed to listen in on these classes. I need to kick you out of the class. <laughs> I'm just kidding, okay? Don't cry. All right, so township, right? Now I have a section, which is one mile, sorry, one square mile. I have a section. And the section could be divided into smaller portions. So this whole square is one um, section or 640 acres. Now, the size in acres of a subsection of a township is a fraction of 640 acres since there are 640 acres in a section. For example, the southwest quarter of a section is a quarter of, uh, it's a quarter section. Thus, its acreage or the size of it is 640 divided by 4, which is 160 acres. Going further, the east half of the southwest quarter is one half of that one quarter, or 80 acres. And if they ask you for the east half of the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter, that's a 20 acre space. So, there you go. Where is the southwest quarter, guys? The easiest way to remember this? Just always put that cross that I presented below, uh, before, I'm sorry, that says north, south, we. Oh, sorry. I got two norths there. So where is, where is the southwest quarter? Okay, there's four squares, if you guys see it. There's four squares now. You have one, two, three, four, because we divided by four. Where's the southwest quarter? One, two, three, or four? Number three, correct. 
So if I said that my property is on the southwest quarter, I pretty much just said that I'm somewhere here, right? That's the southwest quarter, okay? Simple. So let's erase this for now. Now, if it said that I'm on the west half of the southwest quarter, west half of the southwest quarter as an example, where am I located? Let's do the same thing again. We already know this is the quarter, but we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna cut this, all right? We have north, south, we, all right? Now, what they're asking is for the west half, right? So if it's half, I don't need quarters, I need to divide it by two, right? So I have one half on the left, and I have another half on the right. If it's the west half, where's my property located? West half of the southwest quarter. Number one, great. So this is where my property is. Somewhere here. Okay. So I don't need this. I don't need this. Oop, what did I do? There you go. Ah. It's fighting me, guys. It's fighting me. There you go. So that's where my property is. Somewhere here. Now, what if my property is in the southwest quarter, okay, of the southwest quarter, of the southwest quarter? Southwest quarter of the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter. So let's erase all this. We already know, we identified that this is a southwest quarter, right? That's the first thing we identified. I'm going to zoom in. And now I say it's the southwest quarter. Well, make it simple. We just divide it in four again, and that's another southwest quarter, right? Now my property is a quarter of a quarter of a quarter. You cannot go the other way around because if it's a quarter, it's always less than the bigger half, right? Or the bigger quarter, so smaller. So where's mine? We divide into four again. And my property is this 10 acre square right here. Because this is the west, that's the south right there, all right? So southwest quarter of the southwest quarter. I'm going to put all the lines so you guys can see it. That'll be north. Boom. So this will always be north, south, east, north, east, north. So, guys, here's what we did. Again, divided into four to figure out the southwest quarter. We divided into four again to figure out the southwest quarter of that quarter. And we divided into four again to figure out where my property is. Simple. Okay? Now, remembering that the whole thing is 640 acres, all I have to do is divide by four. Right? And that's going to be... 160 acres, right? If I divide 160 by 4 again, it's going to be uh, 40 acres. And when I divide 40 acres by 4, 10 acres. So my property is a 10 acre property. Any questions here? You guys want to do a quick exercise to see if you got it?
Here we go. So here's what I want you guys to do. This one's already uh, preset. But I want you to identify right now this border right here. Hold on. Jose wants the mic. Jose, Jose. Yeah. Yes. You know how to put it down. Yeah. You know how to read words. Okay. So that's why we're going to do a little exercise now, and you'll see uh, how we actually read it after you get the, the answer. Right? And I'll give you the, the, the way to revert it as well. Okay? But I'm, we're going to go over that right now. What I want you guys to do, and don't give me the answer yet. Nobody gives the answer um, in the chat yet. What I want you to do is tell me. This is a quarter of a quarter of a quarter. So there's three steps here. I'm sorry, uh, two steps on this one. It's a quarter of a quarter. And I want you to tell me, right? It's the whatever quarter of the whatever quarter, okay? That's what I want you to tell me when I ask for it, not yet. Another thing to remember is always north, south, and we, okay? Identify, draw it on a piece of paper, identify this quarter right here. You guys ready to give me the answer? All right, going once, going twice. Hit me with the answer. Oof. Okay. I'm waiting. I got only one person answering on Zoom, and I got one person answered on YouTube. There's more people watching, so everybody give me the answer. It's okay to be wrong. Until you take the exam, you can be wrong. Okay? Okay. Always start with the smallest one first, by the way. Only got four answers. There's a lot more of you on, in, uh, on the camera right now. Okay. You guys are starting with the biggest one and not the smallest one. Not going to be a quarter of a quarter. If it's something smaller, right? How can that go last? Quarter of a quarter. Always start with the smallest one first. Jose E says, I have to practice what you preach about the cell phone usage. Have someone blah 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 in my ear. There you go. Have 
That's why when I'm in class, phone on silent. And I'm running a business. I take all distractions. If I'm in class, I'm in class with you guys. Unless it's an emergency that comes through. Um, like for right now, I just got a, the, the reply from PSI exams regarding uh, that student that I told you I was helping out. And they just fixed the error. Okay. All right, so let's figure out what the answer is. So first of all, you guys need to identify the smallest one. Start with the smallest one. So, this is what we have. There's four quarters. There's one, two, three, four quarters, right? If you guys did what I told you, you would put a line here, and you would have that quarter number two is located on the north east. Always start with the smallest one first. This is the northeast quarter. Okay, and it's the northeast quarter of what? Right? So this is the northeast quarter. You start with the smallest one first. And now we got four quarters again. I got one, two, three, four. Right? Where's that quarter? First thing you have to do, again, put the lines. And we have north, south, we. Where's that located? One, two, three, four. It's located on number three. Where's number three? The southwest. So what we just got is the northeast quarter of the southwest quarter of section one or section 10 or section 12, whatever. But this is the northeast quarter because it's on the top right, right? Jose E. wrote upper quarter of the southwest quadrant. Okay, great. Um, there's no upper quarters. Let me just address that. There's no upper quarters. Okay, because it's either on the left or it's on the right. So there's no upper quarter. You could say upper half, right? And that would be the north half, right? You cannot say just upper quarter. You could say upper right quarter, but then it's not north or south. It's always north first, right? Or south first. So th those are the... the immediate directionals, north or south, and then everything else, east or west, okay? That's what I meant, I didn't know where to start. Well, you don't have to yell at me, but we're gonna go over another example. You put all caps, my friend. When, when you put all caps, that's yelling. You guys don't know the, the ethics of uh, texting? Come on. <laughs> All right, let me clear this out. Let's do another one. So this was just a two-step one. But what I'm going to do right now to, to make it easier on everybody, right, is make it a three-step one, just to make it easier on everybody. And I want you to identify this one. Don't forget, the whole square is one section, and then you peel it. You start taking quarters out of it.
Make sure you draw it on a piece of paper before you try to give an answer. Draw it on a piece of paper before trying to give the answer. All right, anybody needs another minute? Okay, two people. Kelsey, almost there. Okay, Eric, you're almost there. Okay. YouTubers, if you guys want, you can drop your answer already. And Zoomers, I want your answer in 30 seconds. 25. 20. No pressure. 15. 10. Five, four, three, two, one. Let me get all those answers. Andre, you cannot go either or. Like, you have to give me a definite answer. In the state exam, you don't go like, mm, it's A or B. State exam, you pick. <laughs> You're confused? It's okay. That's why we're doing this. I know Jose, Jose E says I need Jeopardy music. On, in previous classes, I was doing that. I'll, I'll play the, da, 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 like the game show music as you guys waiting. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I need to have a button here just for that. All right. Go ahead. What's your answer? Just tell me. Okay, remember, always start with the smallest one. So let's zoom in. Boom. What is the first thing we're going to do? Right there. The cross. Right? Where is this located? If I don't put anything else, where is this? Okay. I'll help you. Southwest. So if your answer started with Southwest quarter, you're starting right. Always start with the smallest one. If your answer started with Southwest quarter, you started right. Marlon's like, yeah, I got that one. <laughs> All right, let's go to the vest. So Southwest quarter. Now, let's go to the next quarters. What do we have to do? I already told you, right? Put the lines. All right? And when we put the line, this is located on the south east because this is north, this is west, and it's right there, southeast. So so far, what do we have as an answer? So far we have the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter so far there's one missing okay 
So now we're going to go back to the bigger scale. All the quarters are there. And again, the first thing you do This is north, north, east. So where is this <clears throat> located? It's in the southwest quarter of the, sorry, south east quarter of the northeast quarter okay where is my property located it's on the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of the northeast quarter all right for those of you confused but i'm going to zoom in again to, to try to make it easy zoom in again you always 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 start with the smallest first right so if i were to erase everything here and back to just the X. Okay. Isn't this where we were, Monifa? Right? Where's that located? There's four quarters. There's one, two, three quarters, four quarters. Where's that located? Okay. Number three, right? So number three, if I were to put this right here as a quarter, sorry. It reflects the south because it's pointing down, right? And it's pointing that way. So that would be the west. So this is the southwest quarter. That's where we start, the southwest quarter, right? And now we're going to look at the next, uh, we zoom out. Because we always start with a quarter because it's a smaller portion, right? So now we're going to zoom out. And we have again, one, two, three, and four. Everything is located on number four now, right? If it's on number four, let's put the lines. It's pointing down and pointing to the right. So this is the south. And this is the east. Good so far? All right, I got the, oh, yeah, I saw that face. All right? So that's what it is. And now we're going to zoom out. Okay? And we have, again, one, two, three, four. There's four quarters, right? What are we going to do? Everything is happening here on this side. And it's pointing up. So it's north. And it's pointing to the right. So it's east. Okay? So you got to go through these steps. You start with the smallest one first. And we found southwest. Then the southwest quarter is located on the southeast quarter. And the southeast quarter is located on the northeast quarter of the whole section. Okay? Do the last step, do it again. Okay. So let me take these out. So you already got, you're good with the southwest and the southeast. You're good. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all this out so it's not as confusing. Okay. Where is everything located? Where's my property located? Okay. There's four quarters, right? There's one, two, three, four. Where is my property located? Where's the X? On number two. Great. So if it's divided into quarters, I keep on telling you. Draw the lines. Okay? 
draw the lines now i don't need these lines right i just need that one right so what i do is i figure out where it is we always start with the north or south so in this case the line's pointing north so this is north and the next line which is longitude and latitude is pointing east right so this is now the northeast if you guys were to start the problem with starting from the bigger biggest one the problem is that when you go for the answer it's not the northeast quarter of the south uh, uh, east quarter because it's not it cannot be a bigger quarter of a smaller one that's that's the only reason why i tell you always start with small one first okay Funny if we're good no yes no maybe okay. actually i just said yes in a different language I used to have uh, a student of mine. I'll give you the mic right now. I used to have a student of mine in, uh, in Woodbridge when I was teaching at a school there. And he was sitting. And I'm talking, right? I'm explaining things. And he goes like, and I'm like, wait a minute. You don't agree with what I'm saying? No, sir. I agree. And I'm like, so why are you nodding your head like that? <laughs> so I did, I did not understand the nods and how, how the different speeds means I definitely understand or eh. I'm a little iffy with it okay so over time i understood <laughs> don't shake don't shake your head because that's the, that was the problem was the shaking the head but it's it's so important for us to know the culture other people and, and understand why like it could have been a conflict in class right if i did not un understand it so i asked Mm -hmm. the whole thing just like just like here right when i zoom in right just like here everything that we got on step number two right is in the southeast right just like here keep on zooming in my property is located on the southwest so it's where where it's located Right, so my property is located on the southwest because it's on this little quarter, right? But then, where where is that quarter located? On the southeast, right? And now, because it's the southeast, right? It's the southeast of something. Where is that located? Up here. That's the northeast. Re remember this. We can only divide this in a couple of ways. Okay. But we can only, only divide this in a couple of ways. It's either we have the north half, sorry, north or south, right? So anything above the fold is north. Anything below the fold is south. So in this case, everything was here. So it's above the fold, right? But it's on a corner. So if it's on the corner, right? It's not the north half. It has to be, again, it's divided into four, so it's a quarter of it. So that's the other only option that we can have is anything to the right would be east. Anything to the left would be west, right? So again, this is why, to me, it's so important that you always draw the lines. Okay, if my property is here, it's above the fold and it's to the right of, of that line, right? So it can only be northeast only. Got it? All right. Cool. Uh, Jose A says, that's how we Dominican talk. Yes means no and no means yes. Man, are you understanding this? So that means no? That's what you just told me. <laughs> I asked if you understand. You go like, no, that means no. 
Dominicans. <laughs> Just give me a bunch of trouble. All right? I have some Dominicans here in the in the in this class right now that I give them the link and how to get to certain things and they don't even see it and then they keep on calling me while I'm on the call helping another student. Right? And I give them a little video explaining how to get there. Right? <laughs> Anyway, Bruno, I've been calling you. There's a video right above the text you just sent me saying I've been calling you. Sorry, Wendy. I have to mess with you. I have to. I have to. All right, you guys are good now? All right. Oh, hold on, hold on. Andrea, was that? I didn't see it. Was it good or more or less? Can we do one more? Sure, we can do one more. Three section in one section. Okay. Francis, page, please. We're not on any page right now. I'm just drawing. I'm presenting my artistic qualities. All right, we're going to do one more. Ready? I'm going to take the stuff out of here so it's not as confusing for you. This is the last one. Okay. Boom. Oh. There you go. That one. My student just sent me a message. Bruno, you are a legend. I cannot thank you enough. He's been trying for two weeks to get access to, to take the exam. Took me a couple hours to, to get the real estate commission, the real estate commission, the PSI exams to answer. So this is why I'm telling you, if you guys need help, always reach out to me first and see if I can um, figure it out for you. Okay. Wendy and Susanna disappeared. Guys, come back. And Monifa, I see your arm and I see your book. And Philip is ahead of the game. I didn't even ask for answers yet. Take your time. Northwest quarter, the northwest quarter, okay. All right, we'll see. There's three steps here. Well, but that's the thing. You should, I shouldn't have to tell you. You have to be able to see. Right? Now, the main thing here, like a lot of people ask me, well, Bruno, why, why do we have to learn this, right? The main thing here is they will they could present a map and they'll give you two or three different uh, options, right? I didn't ask for answers yet, Rob, wait, be patient. Um, but they'll give you two or, th uh, or three different options. They give you a map <clears throat> with a bunch of stuff here and then you're gonna have four answers, right? In uh, those four answers, the question could be been which one of these is the largest lot? For instance right that could be one of the questions now you can either learn how to draw it or you can learn how to do the math right to do the math is divide by four divide by two depending if it's a quarter or if it's a half and and so on right drawing 
usually helps uh, understand which one you're which ones you're trying to identify Philip says, I said it wrong. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe yes. I'm not sure. All right. Uh, I didn't ask for answers yet, guys. You keep on putting the answers. Got to keep the suspense all the way to the end. All right. Go ahead. Everybody, give me the answers since you guys are in a rush. Everybody, what, what's the answer? Remember, the state exam, you got up to four hours. Just saying. So no rush. Rushing is a success for failure in the state exam. And the answer is... This is located in the northwest order okay now Jose hey we're in a rush to learn it don't be in a rush to learn anything if I'm taking my time explaining don't be in a rush to learn all right so this is the northwest quarter and this northwest quarter is located in the north west quarter good so far all right and now, for the final one, this is located in the south east quarter. It's to the right, not to the left, for those of you that said southwest. It's to the right of the fold. Okay? Look. Everything is on the right of that fold. So for the final step, it's on the right. Being on the right, it can only be east. Okay? It's divided. So there's a half right there. It's either west or it's east. Got it? Okay. The other thing I was showing is if everything is down here, then it's south, because it's below the fold. So, south. Philip says, as soon as I sent the answer, I knew I wrote it wrong. It happens. All right. Now, in the state exam, school and state exam, you got to remember there's usually, 90% of the times, there's usually two very similar uh, answers. So to trick you, they could have said that this is the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of the southwest quarter, and then give you another answer that says northwest of northwest of the southeast. So the only difference between these two answers is that one says southwest, the other one says southeast. If you are not paying attention, if you're in a rush, like Philip, right? If you're in a rush, you're going to click that button that says, ah, southwest. Sounds about right. Okay. This is why we got to take our time. Jose A says, I got it, but the cross confused me sometime. Okay. But you got it now? I'm doing with colors. I'm doing with the cross. I'm doing it in different ways to see what helps. Everybody learns in different ways. Andrea M says, I was stuck on the little square. Which one? There's so many. <laughs> I know, I'm just messing with you. I got you. All right, but now you guys are good. Yes? Awesome. So let's figure out what page we're at so we can tell um, our students. All right, and we are on page 124. Moving on to page 125. Recorded plat right before the break. 
Monifa says, my brain has to get used to seeing the picture as a whole. There you go. Whatever, whatever works. Yep. And then they start cutting into pieces. You got a piece of orange, right? You peel it, and you take little parts of it. Step by step, yep. Look at the whole thing, and then step by step. Where do you need to be? All right, so recorded plot method. So the recorded plot method is also called the lot and block system. Lot and block system. Okay. For us here in uh, New Jersey, it's the most commonly used. It's the lot and block and the meets and bounds or a combination of it. It's the most commonly used. Right. And all these could be mixed across the, the United States. Now, this is it. The lot and block. You own a property. You own a property on block two, on lots two. I'm sorry, lots two of block eight. So this is the whole block right here. That's the whole block, right? Blocks of uh, houses, right? And this is your lot right here, lot number two on block eight. This is like the simplest one. Where's your property located? Lot two of block eight. That's it. Any questions on that? They might ask you which one of these is the largest lot. So they will tell you, for instance, in the, in the exam, they might say something, it's not erasing, there you go. They might say something like uh, lot number two, which one is the largest lot? Lot number two um, is 100, I'm sorry, 1,000 square feet. This one is 1230 square feet. And they give you dimensions for all of them, right? And they'll give you four answers, right? You need to be able to identify, let's say over here there's another lot that they're, they're using the question, right? And right? It's another road that we're putting here. So they could do this in a state exam, and they say that on block number nine and block number seven right there, and we have lot, I'll, I'll say lot six, and this is 2,400 square feet. So they're going to ask you, hey, on uh, is, which one of these is the largest lot? Is it lot number two on block eight? Is it lot number five on block eight? Is it lot number six on lot uh, seven? Uh, I'm sorry, lot, lot six and block seven. So now you got to look at the map and look out on all of them and see which one is the largest. So they're not going to give you all of them in the same block. We'll give you four different uh, blocks and lots, most likely. Okay? And you have to figure out which one is the largest one. So Nam says, I got that kind of question. There you go. So it could be there. Yep. All right? That's it. The next is... Um, well, so far I've been telling you guys... Um, so far I've been telling you guys about... Uh, lots so uh, about dirt a piece of dirt that you own that has a house on it right and I told you that on the deed that's the only thing we have the only thing we have is the land now guys if my property if this is a condo and my property is up here on the 10th floor but I told you that the only description we have on the deed is the land itself right this is the only description we have is the land okay then how am I going to identify my house on a, or, or my condo unit on the 10th floor the deed says lot and block the deed says section whatever northeast or whatever right the deed says beginning at 
uh, intersection of this line and that line. But no deed says that this is a one family, two, three, four condo, uh, ranch, colonial. No deed describes the, the unit itself. So how do we figure out which unit is mine in this condominium? Jose E says, I'm very thorough. Thanks. Right? Thank you. I try. So guys, how do we figure out or how do we describe? If there's only three methods of uh, legal description, how do we describe our unit on the 10th floor? Anyone? Nobody? What is that, Andrea? Street, block and lot, and level? Okay. What is level? You're close to something. You're thinking, you're thinking, scratching your head. Okay, I see that. I see all the movements. Jose E says floor and unit number. Okay, we're getting somewhere. 10th floor, unit number, got it. But that's the same thing as saying 120 Main Street, uh, 10th floor, unit C. Still does not say what it is. All right. Bum, bum, bum. Da, 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 da. And the answer is elevation. <laughs> it's right here on the screen. So the way we describe Jose A got something close to it, right? We, we would describe as this being I'm going to clear this out. 100 feet, right? And this being 110 feet. Now, the difference between these two is that this is the floor and this is the ceiling. So if you guys remember, a condo that I own is from the paint in, right? So guess what? I only own but the space between the floor and the ceiling, right? So my unit is located as uh, Andre M was saying, is located on the block and lot, right? That's a block eight, lot number two. And I'm a hundred feet above uh, datum, which we're gonna talk about in a second. That's where my floor starts and the ceiling, which limits my space, the ceiling now, right? is 110 so i have 10 feet of property that i live in okay in the air and that's what it is we describe elevations okay now these elevations are described based on a datum okay so the standard elevation reference points are called datums right now a datum is just a point of reference I want you guys to remember one thing before I read the rest. If we have the earth, right? Then we have it just like a, 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 an orange. Have the earth divided into, sorry, that's a basketball. Right? Almost like an onion. That's what it is. And these things right here, are called time zones. Okay. Now, if you guys know, let's say this one right here is GMT or Greenwich Meridian Time, and that's time zone zero. Okay. We are on, uh, well, I am, and I think most of you are also on the EST. EST is Eastern Standard Time. So let's say that this is what it is, EST. Now, EST in comparison to zero, EST is minus four or minus five, depending on minus five hours, depending on summer or winter, right? So let's say it's minus five hours. GMT, which is uh, the London, Lisbon area, right? So if we put that, that, that cut right there, um, that's point zero. That's a reference point. And everything goes from there. 
right? So we cannot say here in the in New Jersey, for instance, we cannot say that we that it's 12:30 as it is in time zero right now. It's 12:30 um, over there, right? Imagine midnight, right? Imagine that you're in the middle of the of the day and say, hey, it's midnight and it's bright and shiny outside still. That doesn't make any sense, All right? So we put minus five to adjust those. When it comes to datums, the concept is exactly the same. We use one as the initial reference point, right? So we have a datum as an initial reference point. And then depending on where you are in the world, there's different elevations, okay? So let's say this is Houston. Okay, and Houston would be, as an example, would be uh, 30 feet above the original data, right? This is point zero. Okay, and let's say, as an example, that this is um, LA, and LA would have been, as an example, so this is plus 30 feet. LA is minus 15 feet. Okay, I'm just putting numbers. I'm not saying it is. Okay. Um, but let's say it's minus 15 feet. I don't know the exact numbers. Minus 15 feet of point zero. Now, what is point zero? For GMT, we said it's like the London, Lisbon, Casablanca area, right? So that, that, that line. The GMT or the datum for elevations or the point of reference is New York. New York is the point zero, elevation zero. Everything starts from where? from there and it's not just any point in New York because New York is huge right it's the mean sea level mean sea level at the New York Harbor okay so this is where the water doesn't go up or down anymore we've made that as a reference so yes guys elevations all over the world are based on water Right? Because if we're in the land, if you're on land, we have those ups and downs, the mountains, right? That's it. But water is water. The oceans, it's the only thing that's flat. <laughs> Once you reach that level, saturation level, you cannot put any more water into it. And everything is based on that. So if you get on an airplane and they tell you, hey, we're 20,000 feet above, right? Where are you? You're 20,000 feet above New York Harbor. Oh, but I'm in the middle of Russia. Well, elevations are based on New York Harbor. You guys understand? Even if you see the, the altimeter on a uh, helicopter or on a plane, the altimeter, it, it's, a, it's a blue, it's a line, and then everything is blue because that's the water. Everything above, that's your elevations based on water. So when we see that, the mean sea level of New York Harbor as a reference point, we also have benchmarks. And benchmarks, like I said, is, is the GMT. It's the EST, it's the mountain, it's the, the central, it's whatever, right? Central or mountain uh, standard times, Pacific standard time. As we go, those are reference points, right? To the original point. Because if we are, imagine we're in Houston, right? And we tell somebody, hey, your property, right, the property that you just bought is 130 feet, right? Let's say it's the 10th floor, like we were, we were saying. Your property is 130 feet uh, from New York data. And like, I'm in Houston. Why are you talking to me about New York, right? So benchmarks are local reference points. Surveyors will never mention New York when they present you a survey. Surveyors know that you either above, below, or at the same level as New York. And they tell you your property is located 100 feet from this datum, this local datum. Okay? You guys understand? Like the same, the same thing. When you ask me the time, I'm not going to say, hey, it's minus, minus 5 of whatever it is in London right now. All right? We're minus 5 hours from London. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you it's 7.30 right now. You guys got it? I'll give you the local 
info, not the remote info. So that's what uh, benchmarks are for, to, to make it easier to, um, for surveyors to identify the properties. Any questions on this? That was easy, right? Okay, great. So with that being said, 735 guys, we're gonna go into a quick 10 minute break and then we're gonna come back for basics of contract. So an overview of contract law, all right? Uh, YouTubers, I'm gonna close this session. I'll open one right after. I'll see you guys in a little bit.